Well, that was a great me message of motivation, and it's time for the news. Now, Parliament has, for the third time, rescheduled approval of the controversial $993 million Paul Logo Dam project. The minority have threatened to boycott the approval process for the project because it claimed it is fraudulent and also bloated by at least by $150 million. Parliament's Finance Committee recommended the House approval of the project, even though the first deputy majority whip in Parliament, Matthew Nyindam, admits the value for money audits was yet to be done. In the office of the present letter, this is worth noting. There is a paragraph we read. The Falgo Multipurpose Dam and Irrigation Project will be funded through the budget in 2020. If it's budget, then we demand, where is the financing agreement? Budget is not a financing agreement, and it cannot be a financing agreement. And therefore, you brought a document earlier and said loan agreement. I'm pointing out your contradictions. Now they must take it seriously. If there's a financing agreement, lay it and bring it. If it is budget, say so. But 2020 budget, you can't go and correct anything in it. If it was not in it, it was not in it. So, Palugu, let the committees work. As you got to be the referral. And they inform me that they are yet to meet. Indeed, they are saying that they will meet tomorrow. Which that will mean that the earliest time they could submit their report to us will be perhaps Thursday or Friday. I think it's important that the two committees engage themselves on the contract agreement in respect of the, the facility. The speaker at the last leg, when he started debating, I will resist the temptation to debate him. I, think, I thought they had said that they had not seen the document, they needed time to study it. However, they jumped the cart and went and organized a press conference to say that the, the, the facility is too expensive. Even though they said that they had not even, uh, they had not even seen the, 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 the contract agreement. However, they arrived at that conclusion, only they can tell. Mr. Speaker, I resist that temptation. Let's wait until the, the joint committee comes back with their report. I address further that this item should be listed only when the relevant report on the further referral is ready for consideration of this honorable house. And that the leader of the house and the clerk should ensure that what we now await to move forward comes to, to us as soon as possible. A request on Tuesday by the founder and chief executive of Defund Gold Dealership, Men's Gold, to withdraw a case brought against some aggrieved customers who picketed as his resident could not be honored just because it wasn't supported by the necessary paperwork. Now the customers who had stormed the Trazako home of Nana Piambensa to demand payment of their locked up deposits were arrested and subsequently charged with, among others, conspiracy to commit crime, unlawful assembly, forcible entry, and offensive conduct conducive to breach of peace. Now, a Medina District Court presided over by His Worship Richard Delalianku granted bail to 92 of them who appeared in court in the sum of some 3,000 Ghana cities with one surety. Now, the court also adjourned to March 3 to allow the complainant to properly notify the court about the decision to settle the matter. Join News correspondents, Komladum, however, reports that the aggrieved customers made it clear they were not impressed by Namwan's gesture to redraw the canes against them. The 92 accused were in court Tuesday with the expectation of getting a favorable judgment, which will enhance their push towards retrieval of their locked up fans from chief executive officer of a gold dealership, Men's Gold. No matter what, no matter the frustrations, no matter what, it's our money, our blood. So, of course, yes, the court will be coming. We'll be doing everything possible, you know, to, to, to come to the court and do all that we have to do. But we need our money. When, when I get my money, I'm okay with it. The customers clad in red and black, some looking frail, picketed in front of the Medina District Court ahead of a court hearing. 
The complainant, who is chief executive officer of Men's Code, Nana Apia Mensa, though not in court, would be represented by PRO Ni Ama Amate Fio and led by his lawyers. He told the court about their decision to discontinue the case. According to him, there had been an agreement between the two parties to have the matter settled out of court. The court held that the complainants did not formally and properly notify the court about the said decision. The court went ahead to hear the plea of the accused persons and on four counts, conspiracy to commit crime, thus unlawful lawful assembly, unlawful assembly, forcible entry, and offensive conduct conducive to breach of peace. They pleaded not guilty to all four counts. The court presided over by his worship Richard Delalianku adjourned the case to March 3, urging the parties to present a formal request on the agreement to discontinue the case. <laughs> Lawyer for the accused persons at Tukwe Sam told journalists the two parties have shown good faith and will take steps to notify the court appropriately by the next set date. Under section 72 and 73 of the court acts, it is in the rights of both accused and the complainant to propose settlements. And the court encourages it that we don't need to litigate throughout for a very long time. And so they agree that they will settle. The court have advised that they should put that in writing. And so that intention should be expressed in writing. And then we file terms of settlement, hopefully on the 3rd of March or before the 3rd of March. But the customers were not satisfied. We are not satisfied. When he is ready to settle things with us, he should tell us when he is coming to pay us our money. Because he himself has brought us to court. It's not we who he it's not we who brought him to court. So if he is ready, he should come and tell us the time that he is ready to pay us our money. Simple. It's the money that everybody is interested. Because he has been supporting by so many big men and he can do whatever he wants to do. How can you do part and then you still want to do a thing? We are not owing you. He is owing us, we are not owing him. We are going to prepare and then we are, we are coming like Kakai. This one, we are coming, we are going to prepare and come. So this one, we are not going to leave this matter. We are going to prepare fully and come. We are, we are going to face them. Oh, whether well, well, do or die, we are waiting for them. Yeah, you go hang in a seat. Me, you're back in a seat. You're going to go to the sky. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. Leader of the Ashanti Region chapter of a customer group, Ezekiel Anon Akagbo, called on government through the Securities and Exchange Commission to fulfill their duty to the customers. Whenever the regulator, which is sick, suspects or sees an institution or an individual operating in the securities industry without license, what they have to do is that they should shut the company down. But before they do so, they have to ensure that those shareholders or the owners of that institution or that individual operating such an illegal business should make sure that he or she pays every investor of his or her locked up fund, including interest. A sense of displeasure, dissatisfaction and anguish in equal measure characterized the mood of the customers after the court hearing. Momentarily, a growing rage of seething anger unleashed on the public relations officer of the company, Ni Ama Amate Fio. He had to be whisked away in a police vehicle as the customers charged towards him. An initial plan to march to present a petition to the seat of government did not happen as planned. The president, it is our hope that this time we are listened to. Just as the customers of other financial institutions are being sorted out, it is our prayer that we shall also be sorted out. It followed the police's notice to the group about their inability to provide security for the customers for Tuesday's march due to other crime-fighting engagements. But that will not stop leadership of the group from submitting their petition to the Jubilee House, although not through a direct senior official. The group says it is disappointed it was unable to present the petition directly to an official, but says it is not the end of their fight. Between now and March 3 remains crucial for them, they tell me. In between, a series of actions have been hatched to make another push for their monies. And as you're well by, by now, uh, it is... Um, 
three to four weeks since Joy FM, as well as Joy News, began the whole initiative using the hashtag Arrive Alive just to make sure as pedestrians, motorists, and drivers, we start a journey and conclude that journey in safety. And um, just uh, to update you, more than 200 people apparently uh, have so far died on Garnet Rose just January this year. Now, that's just 10% more fatalities than what was recorded same time last year. A lot of these fatalities have been blamed on excessive speeding by drivers on the roads. These deaths, Chief Superintendent Alexander Obing of the Motor Transport and Traffic Department of the Police Service explains, could have been avoided with some simple tools such as speed limiters coupled with enforcement of traffic regulations on the roads. He's been speaking to Joy News as part of the campaign Arrive Alive. If something had been done in, to support the driver, and that is why in our road law, tackle graphs and speed limiters have been incorporated. Over time, the difficulty has been how to ensure its mass implementation. And it's the reason why the recent call that that uh, regulation in our law has to see the full benefit by vehicle owners and drivers and uh, operators and uh, it is good and it's a nice call that uh, operators, uh, fleet owners, transport operators who are not adopted this culture should. So add my voice and admonish other transport operators, Metro Mass, uh, GPRTU, Cooperative, Protoa, and all these plethora of operators who are supporting Ghana in delivering uh, public road transport services, that it is in their own interest and it is geared towards protecting their investments so that they don't get involved in a necessary road accident as a result of unnecessary speeding. I hope that with this call, measures will be put in place to ensure that uh, we consult very well with the operators, they accept it, and all others will buy into it so that this noble uh, strategy will come on stream to support and eliminate one of the risk factors that contributes immensely to uh, traffic crashes on our road. And make sure that when you have seen, cited, or experienced these crashes on the road or some infractions, you would want to send out audios, videos, or some pictures. And you can do that by tagging us on our Facebook page, Joy News on TV, or through our Twitter handle, at Joy News on TV. Always make sure you add the hashtag, hashtag Arrive Alive, hashtag AM Show, hashtag Joy News. But that's it for the news. But before we do go, let's focus on this. The 2020 National Science and Mass Regional Competition began from the Western North region with some 11 schools competing for two sports at the national level. Now, at the end of the competition, two schools from the region qualified to compete at this year's national contest, slated for June. Now, first time qualifiers, Biasina High School, and the second time qualifiers, Bibiena or the Bibieni Senior High School, are hoping to bring the trophy to the Western North region. In Natalia Kwanza has the rest of the story. The annual event with its competitors from the regions aiming to promote in the study of math and science took place at the Takrade Nat Hall. All 11 schools gathered at the hall by 10 a.m. of making it to the nationals. Two groups were expected to compete for two slots at the national stage. The quiz master started a ball rolling from group one, which comprises of Seshiria So Senior High School. Sishibakwai Senior High School, Joboso Senior High School, Nana Brintum, Bodie Senior High School, and Bia Senior High and Technical School, who kept the leading baton for the end of the fourth round of the competition. Here are the scores Bodie, three points, Sishibakwai, five points, Joboso, nine, Nana Brintum, 18, Sishibakwai, 20. BRSHTS 25 points. BR Senior High and Technical School emerged as winners 
beating the five schools. Oh, we are very, very happy. And God being so good, he, he has helped us a lot. As far as when we were coming, we thought we were just an empty version, but God's grace, we are the winners now. Now, <laughs> I don't even know what to say, but uh, we are going to win. Yes, we hope our next contest, we are going to win. So they should all uh, appreciate us, and then when we get there, we can do better. Ishmael Atasedu, a teacher at Bia Senior High School, believes the students are going to lift the flag of the Western North Tour during the national competition. The preparation we had towards this regional competition, I think we are going to intense that because once we are going to the national, there is going to be more competition. And as expected, we also have to prepare if we need to go far or if we win the ultimate, then we have to prepare. The second group in Sara Senior High School, Asarian so Senior High School, Sishiria so Senior High and Technical School and Bibiani Senior High School also took the attempt of the competition. The winner, just like the first group, was easily identified by their aptness in answering all the questions right from the first round. We just ended the second round for the Western North regions. And then here I have with me BBNE Senior High Technical School who have qualified for the nationals. Um, for this, according to them, this is the second time they are qualifying for the nationals. So how do you feel about um, winning the competition? Oh, actually, in fact, if it was like you, you would really be very, very happy because since that, that our school was established, this is the second time we've made up to the national level, so I'm really, really ecstatic this afternoon. So far, we are having good, a good team, so I think we are going to make good, a, a good work too. Do you think you would bring the trophy to the Western North region? Actually, <laughs> as for now, I can say, but I know, in fact, we are going to do something very marvelous. I can promise you, you are going to take the trophy, but I know we are going to make a marvelous work as we are moving to the national level. So two schools have um, made it to the national from the Western North region. That is Bia Senior High School and then BBNE Senior High and Technical School. Uh, from here we are going to the Western region where some schools are going to start uh, the competition today. That's it, the latest news headlines. But we do have more news as we have seen them published on the front pages of the newspapers. Myself, Mamavi Osabwaje will be here to do the news review. Do stay with us.